Let's do this. It's showtime. You're listening to the Thoughts of a Blog Queen podcast. These are just my thoughts. With your host, LaRae Renee. A woman, her thoughts, and a mic. Are you ready? Check this out. Hey y'all, it's LaRae Renee, your blog queen here. I am back with another episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that you guys are doing amazing on this Thursday. Um, So you guys, I am trying something a little bit different. I really hope the audio comes out for you guys, but I did not do like a trial and error run or anything like that. It's just, um, I wanted to do something. What if, okay. Let me back up. So what I've realized is that a lot of my reflection and a lot of my like aha moments and a lot of my time that I have with God um, comes when I am in the water. Um, So therefore, any time that I am in the shower, any time that I am taking a bath, any time that I am near the ocean, I seem to just get this like epiphany or just this profound thought. And I really feel like God has blessed me with the ability to use my voice and share it with other women. And so for that, um, you know, sometimes things come to me at at, at inopportune moments. And so I decided to try to turn this into kind of a thing. And so I decided that I needed to have kind of like a spiritual bath and in me doing that, it would be a moment for me to reflect on some things. And it would be a moment for me to just kind of think about exactly where I am in this moment. And so I decided that it would be great if I could share some of the things um, that I am reflecting on with you guys during that time. So um, before we get started and move forward, guys, make sure you're following me on Instagram, thoughts of a blog queen underscore podcast. Um, Make sure you guys are subscribed on Apple Podcasts or following on Spotify. Make sure you're also following on iHeartRadio if that is your thing. Um, And share this episode, drop a review. If you are a user of Apple Podcasts, then you know that there are um, places for you to rate and review us. And I would appreciate it greatly if you guys would head over there and drop a rating of this episode or just me in general, um, any episode and leave a review. All reviews are subject to be read on the show. So I will definitely give you a shout out if I come across your review. All right. So with that being said, you guys, um, let's go ahead and let's just talk about some stuff. Um, I feel like there is a, I guess, a need to talk about healing during like the heartbreak phase. Right. Like, I feel like that's a something that all of us can relate to. What I like to talk about on this platform is something that I know that all of us as women can relate to and that we've been through. Um, And and heartbreak is something that I think the majority of us can say that we've had to overcome. But I wanted to kind of talk about how we feel in that moment while we're going through it because we go through a lot of different emotions we go through a lot of like ups and downs I really feel like we're kind of bipolar (laughs) during the heartbreak like healing process and there's no one surefire way to say this is how you heal from a heartbreak the only thing that can really truly genuinely heal heartbreak is time It takes time and it's not something that you should try to rush. It's not something that anybody should ever tell you that you need to rush. Um, It happens when it happens and it just kind of gradually happens. And so you just first and foremost have to accept that fact that it just is going to take time. Right. So I want I want to just speak on some of the 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 roller coaster emotions that we go through. Um, I think initially we feel that hurt when we're heart when we're heartbroken we feel this this really sad kind of just like sorrow like pain and it's it's really it really hurts the shit really hurts um we feel kind of helpless we feel helpless we feel like 
there's just it's like the end of the world when we're dealing with a heartbreak and there's no way to like no way to fix that no way to come back from that and you cry and you cry and you cry and you cry and it's like you will never stop crying and for those of us who have really experienced heartbreak then you know that sometimes we can just feel that at the drop of a dime and literally just start crying out of nowhere like it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing you can think about whatever it was that broke you and start shedding tears that is when you know it is real that is when you know you had a real genuine effect by whatever this experience was because it it really it really hurts you and you can almost physically feel the anxiousness and the Um, The nervousness inside of your heart when you're going through this part of the process. It just hurts. It just makes you feel so alone, so lost. And then if you're a person who's like me, you know, initially you keep a lot of your personal things to yourself. So you don't have anyone to really talk to if that's the case. Some, not everybody's like that. Some people talk to, you know, whoever it is that they talk to. But some people, they tend to keep that emotion to themselves and try to process it and work through it on their own. And I'm not saying if that's right or wrong. It just all depends on who you are. For me, I'm still trying to figure out if that's the right thing that I need to do. I'm such a personal person overall and in general that I don't know any better. Like that's what I'm always going to do. I'm always going to initially just keep my thoughts to myself and try to figure out how to how to, you know, manage them on my own. And, you know, it seems to be okay as far as whether I can say it's working or not, but it just is what it is. That's what I just choose to do. So for you, if that's what you choose to do, I want you to make sure that that is healthy for you because a lot of times bottling up things is not the best way to do it either. And you, you definitely need someone to... Um, vent those things out too and so if there is not an actual person that you have that you need to go to to talk to about it then I definitely recommend you airing those things out like journaling those things or you know just talking them out out loud a lot of times not even when I'm I'm like podcasting or anything like that but just in general I talk things out out loud outside of my head like I need to hear myself say the things that I'm saying and 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 I need to 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 understand what it is that I'm that I'm trying to process at the moment instead of just trying to keep that feeling or whatever that is inside of me um I can say that for me, podcasting has kind of come to be a, 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 a kind of an, an outlet for dealing with my emotions on certain things, but not everything, because not everything that I talk about is something that I have actually gone through. I may have experienced something or I may have, um, I may know someone that has experienced it or I may have, you know, just been able to speak on it because of some sort of connection to it but I definitely know that you need to have some sort of an outlet to get your thoughts out Um, and journaling does happen to be one of the best ways to actually do that aside from like seeking counsel seeking therapy Um, and I'll I'll touch on that in, in a second but yeah you definitely need to have some sort of outsource for your feelings because if you keep everything in they only build up and it's kind of like you're clogging your emotional drain if that makes sense when you're you know All of these things are happening and you're continuing to pack it down and pack it down and think that you have room for it. And you're really just like clogging up, you know, clogging up your emotions because you're not letting them out. And so it's high time that we begin to realize that it is okay, first and foremost, to let those things come out. Um, If you are in a situation where you can talk about that, that feeling to the person that hurt you or the person that put you in that position, then by all means, you can do that as well. For some people, that is not a solution that is going to be good. That is not a solution that may, may even be like an option. 
depending on what it is. But if it is an option and you feel as though you need to express those things, I feel like you should be able to do that. I feel like there shouldn't be anyone to try to make you feel any certain type of way for expressing how you feel in that moment. Um, Being heartbroken and dealing with hurt is not an easy task. It's not an easy task and we definitely like can't do it by ourselves. You know, I would like to sit here and say that we can, but and you know, this kind of takes me back to the last episode that I had um, when she's tired of being tired and, and how I just talked about how women just try to take on everything and they don't deal with what they really need to deal with in that time. They're just so focused on being the superwoman that they're not dealing with it. And so I feel like during a heartbreak, that's something that we could likely fall into not speaking our truth not getting our our emotions out and that can be a damaging thing so no matter what it is that you have gone through you need to always be able to say that you can vent those things out um and so with that I I just I try to again I try to find things that I can connect with whether it's something that I'm reading or just again me writing or just me speaking and verbalizing those things out loud I definitely um am just an avid advocate for like you know just speaking your truth and walking your truth and just women being able to you know get get whatever it is that they they need and healing is oftentimes a big part of of what we need so then when you have that 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 phase of like the hurt then you'll go through that phase of like the anger right and when you're angry oh my god you start thinking of all kind of shit right you just (laughs) you think about like all of the things that you wish a motherfucker would <laughs> you think about just like the audacity that people have or that a certain individual had you think about the nerve um you get angry because you really feel like i did not fucking deserve this why am i dealing with this Depending on what it is, you definitely are just kind of like, why am I dealing with this shit at this point in my life? Like everything was going smooth. Everything was going good. And then bam, I got to deal with some bullshit. Well, let me tell you, you are going to have to deal with some bullshit. It's going to be inevitable. And so with that, with knowing that, like you got to figure out the best way that you're going to be able to kind of work through that. Right. So being angry is definitely a common and it is definitely a normal feeling to have when you're going through the process of being hurt anger you are angry that this person or that these people or whatever it is have put you in a position to make you feel this way um and it's it it sucks it sucks it sucks so bad but can I tell you that it is not going to, it's not the end, but I'm also going to layer up on that comment and say that I get how you can just really be just feeling low and out of it and really just like, uh uh-uh, I like, you don't know how you're going to make it through, but yet every single day you continue to wake up and you continue to get through I understand that feeling and just don't ever let anyone try to take that feeling away from you. That right to feel anger. You have a right to feel anger for whatever it is that hurts you. That anger is a human emotion. That anger is a valid emotion. That anger will fuel a lot of the thoughts that you have. And so you definitely have to be cautious of yourself when you're going through the anger phase because the anger in you will cause you to be very uh, reckless with some of the things that you are doing if you lose control of the anger. This is would be the point of, of getting hurt when we would just kind of do some stupid shit and shit that we would regret after the fact, whether it's doing something to try to hurt the other person intentionally, whether it's, you know, trying to damage someone else's 
property because of our feelings or just, you know, we have to be cautious of the anger phase because anger, oh my God, it will definitely pick you apart. It will test your limits. It will ball you up, eat you and spit you back out if you don't learn how to handle it (laughs) the proper way. So dealing with the anger is a it's a big deal right it's a big deal it's a big deal because it's still early in our feelings and we're still trying to sort things out we're still trying to make everything be like you know understand everything for what it was and so embrace your anger Go through it, feel it, and then when you are actually ready to release it, then release it. But don't ever put a a time stamp on when you should be over something, when you should no longer be angry at something. Especially when, again, when it stems from being hurt. I'm not talking about any of just like the petty stuff like, oh, you just walked in the office and you just mad. You know, I'm really I'm, I'm really talking about the process of actually being hurt by an individual And the emotions that we go through. And so we just talked about the hurt of it and the pain. And now we're talking about the anger of it. So in in the anger of, of being hurt, you have the capacity to do some major damage. Physically do some major damage. Mentally do some major damage. Whatever it is, you definitely have the capacity to do that and so you have to watch over yourself very carefully because you don't want to to put yourself in a bad position when it's all said and done with um and so coming off of that i want to talk about like being vulnerable during this hurt phase this heartbreak phase being vulnerable takes a different turn right So when you're vulnerable, you are just kind of feeling like you need, you're seeking something. You need something. And we will get what we need from the wrong resource if that's what it comes to because we are so emotionally vulnerable. And we, the guard that we have, it's like, it, it is, it's up, but it's seeking like some way to to let someone in, if that makes sense. It's like a little just side entrance way or just some kind of way for us to allow um, other people, uh, another person, a different energy to come in and try to take that hurt and, and that pain away from us. And so we allow other energy to come in and we will often regret that as well so being vulnerable in your heartbreak is also another period that you have to watch yourself and you have to be mindful of the decisions that you make because you will absolutely reach out to someone that you don't need to reach out to you will absolutely uh, return a text message that you shouldn't you will absolutely begin to entertain the wrong people when you are vulnerable and it's only because you have this void from being hurt and there's something missing when someone hurts you a piece of you is taken away and so when you're going through the vulnerable phase you are looking to find something or someone that can just fill that void temporarily yeah you guys following me so when you're looking to fill that void um, you may have a tendency to look in the wrong place. And so that's where we have to learn that we have to adjust some things and we have to do some things differently. So understand that a lot of, you know, when you are going through this process, this whole phase, and you are in that vulnerable phase, it may be an ideal time for you to distance yourself from you know, the things in your life that could potentially connect you to other people, whether that is through your social media, um, that could be, you know, texting someone you didn't really have any business texting or, you know, just whatever. But just be mindful that this is this particular phase is a very, very 
um, critical point. Because once you make a decision to patch up or try to heal something with something that is temporary, you could be setting yourself up to have to deal with something for a lot longer and you definitely don't want to be put in that situation. So that's why you have to kind of manage what you're doing. So we, you know, going through the heartbreak, we talked about the hurt, we talked about the anger, we talked about the vulnerability. Um, I think that we should also, you know, naming those three things, I think that we should also have to talk about, um, I guess maybe the experience. So dealing with the experience just as a whole is what I mean. Like actually taking a look at the experience And trying to analyze it for what it actually is, not for what you hope it to be, not for the potential you want it to be, not for what you think you want other people to see it as, but a real self-reflecting moment where you are totally honest with yourself and you can identify any pieces of things that you could have done differently. And let me be clear, this particular, I'm not saying this to say that you blame yourself for something that someone else did. I'm just saying if there is any room for for you taking any type of accountability in this type of situation, then you should definitely do that. This that may not apply to everybody. That may not be a thing for everybody, but if it is for you, then you should definitely try to take a moment to figure out, you know, why does it feel the way that it feels? Um why Did I respond in this way? Why did I react in this way? Why did I do this a certain way? You know, whatever it is, you have to make sure that you embrace that experience and never forget that experience. You want to be able to always catapult yourself up by the experiences that you've been through. And you want to always be able to look back and say, okay, you know, I in, in this particular situation, I did this, I did this, and I did this. And this just does absolutely nothing for me. This is not what I need. This is not, you know, I, and so then you're able to kind of move forward. Does that make sense to you guys? I'm I'm trying to break down all these different elements of just dealing with the heartbreak and, you know, just little ways that we can handle it. I, um, I get very, um, caught up, I guess I should say, in trying to... make the best decision for myself that I often don't look at all corners of it where I might look at you know three cor- three fourth corners of it but there's still that little corner that I wasn't quite sure about you know what I mean so I don't know you guys I just I wanted to talk about that because I just was I was sitting here thinking about it and I was just kind of thinking about some things that I had gone through and thinking about some things in the past and I really was just kind of like shit like I don't know if I've ever really actually talked about like heartbreak heartbreak or if I said anything in reference to it I know that I really didn't expand on it and so that's what I'm trying to give you guys through this but all in all during your your heartbreak process you have to keep yourself first you have to you know as cliche as that sounds but you have to make sure that you are good before anything else before you do anything else before you like you have to make sure that you are good and that is going to be a monumental roadblock that you get past um when you are kind of dealing with the heartbreak and then I feel like we kind of go through the denial phase and where we really are just kind of like trying to make sense of it and and this is kind of I want to say this is kind of just like desperate denial 
The desperate denial is where you're trying to find any reason to make it make sense. You're trying to find any reason to... make what happened or what you had to go through, make it okay. You're trying to find a way. I know that I can remember when I was really in like a lot of toxic ass relationships or situations when things came up that I knew and, 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 and I tried to find an excuse to, 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 I guess, accept it. Because I wasn't ready to cut the toxicity out of my life. I was still attached to it. So I tried to find ways to make sh- you know, make it as though I, you know, just, I added to the problem. I, I, you know, or I caused some sort of thing. It's like I tried to even out the playing field. And you can't always do that. Because a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with you. But because we're so desperate, that desperate denial, we're trying to find a way to, you know, you know, we, we want to stay latched on to that whatever it is. And so you try to come up with something in your own mind because and, and then if you're not talking to anyone else and so you're not hearing any any other outside perspectives on it and you're just dealing with it by yourself, you are liable to, to talk yourself into believing that there's something that you could have done different there's an excuse for what happened there's a reason for why it happened you contributed in some kind of way or you will seek refuge by trying to do something to even out the playing field and then this is where it gets really really sticky because then you're doing things like you're looking for revenge to inflict that same pain upon the person that 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 caused you that pain and so you're just going out and you're just doing reckless shit it's that desperate denial so you have to you like i said you're trying to 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 even out the playing field and and you will get reckless in your decision making skills and then you will invite other energy and you will invite other unnecessary problems to add on to this already complicated as fuck equation that you're dealing with that you still haven't figured out how to solve right I mean this whole thing is like a process it's a process and I know that this is all too familiar to a lot of us like we know this we know this so well I know I know it I know it I know it very well and I know how you know the mind can maneuver through it the female mind can maneuver through it. All of us aren't always strong all of the time. All of us don't always have that ability to just be like, oh, shit, next, buy, I'm out, or oh, oh, well, fuck it, it is what it is. You know, we all don't have that capability to do that, you know? And I'm not here to say that that is either the right or wrong way to handle something. If you are the type of person that can just take your loss and roll with it and not Get it, take anything out of it, not give it a second thought. That may be good for you. It may not be, you know, the best for me, but it may be okay for you. Again, there's no one dimensional way to say that a heartbreak has to be healed. So, I just, you know, want us to be mindful of the different things that we that we go through and. And when we're speaking about a heartbreak, we have to really take into account that we are actually really very, um, we're really very broken in this moment. Really very broken. And it, it really hurts. It really hurts to know that someone can take you through something so traumatic or take you through something just so gut-wrenching and you don't understand why they took you through that and then you realize like like, because you had nothing like you did nothing wrong you did nothing wrong sis some people are just selfish individuals some people are just heartless 
Some people are just hurt. What do they say? They say hurt people hurt people. Broken people break people. So if you're dealing with an individual who has their own baggage or who had went through their own um, heartbreak process at some point in life and if they weren't able to handle that in a healthy way or handle it in an effective way and they just bottled their shit all up and, and, and dealt with it the best way that they knew how to deal with it which likely wasn't the best way and, and coming from my perspective from a woman and I'm talking about a man if you were dealing with a man who had gone through his own shit and had to deal through his own heartbreak if he you know a lot of times and I'm not saying this to say all men but a lot of men they don't deal with their shit the proper way they just bury it and move on to the next and they carry that shit into the next situation with them and they you know they're not handling their selves the way that they should and they're going to cause people pain because they are not healed themselves it's a cycle that will continue until we can begin to learn how to effectively handle our hurt effectively handle our pain and again it's going to look different for everybody but we have to figure out what it's going what it what I, what you what that what you need i'm sorry you have to figure out what you individually need and if a person didn't go through their shit the right way and they come to you and they didn't unpack before they get to you oh do you know everything that is inside of this baggage layers upon layers upon layers of shit sis layers upon layers of things to get through and the more traumatic the experience that that person had to deal with think about how they are mentally dealing and this is not now don't get me wrong I'm not excusing when someone hurts you but you know but I'm just saying think about if they had their own you know shit to deal with and they come to you with all of that and you know think about what they had gone through or what they might be going through whether they really ever actually got over it people tend to think that they get over it but a lot of times we just get over people with people we never really fully fully like heal that wound we never really f- like fully figure out how to actually doctor that wound up we just heal people we heal ourselves with other people we put we 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 bandage ourselves with the company of other people we bandage ourselves by sleeping with other people we bandage ourselves by just saying that i'm over it and we go out we party we drink we smoke we turn up and then we say okay i'm ready to be loved again or i'm ready to love someone again and that's not true (laughs) <laughs> that's not true at all but that's how we that's how we deal with it that's how we deal with it when we don't do it the right way so what what would be the right way for you as i am getting older i am realizing now more in my own personal situations my own personal like storms that i have to go through it is now time for me to begin to consider talking to someone professionally I'm t- therapy, yeah, therapy. Because I want to be able to actually, as I progress in on my platforms and as I progress and talk to other women and I try to share what I have with other women, I want to make sure that I'm speaking from a place that is healed, healing, Speaking from a place that is has gained a broad perspective, I want to speak from a place that is not only just experience and for me to say, oh yeah, I went through that too. I want to be able to share and, and use my platform to say, I went through this and then I was able to heal it by doing this. And I am honestly saying that I have, you know, worked through the like I want to be able to actually deliver that on my platform I don't want to just talk to just talk you know even though a lot of things that we can get on the on the podcast and we can just talk to you know and and 
you know, we can grab the attention of listeners and we can and they can say, oh, yeah, like, you know, she sounds dope, you know, dope as hell or she sounds cool. Or, yeah, I went through that same thing. So I get what sis is talking about. But also I want to be able to also give you something um, to take away from it. I tell you guys that all the time, I want you to collect your gems and use them when you need to use them. Take what you need, leave what you don't. That's how it works. But, you know, just don't take, don't take your heartbreak lightly and don't ever feel like your heartbreak and your process of healing has to look identical to someone else's. It doesn't have to be the start and finish of a Beyonce album. It doesn't have to be what your relative went through or what they say they went through in there, you know. It has to be catered to you. It has to be what you need it to be for you. And it's not going to always look the same as what someone else went through. Take your healing and your emotional well-being and your mental well-being. Take all of that serious and protect it. Unfortunately, you can't stop yourself from being heartbroken. You can't stop someone from hurting you if that is what is going to happen. Um, you know, and a lot of, I believe that a lot of things that we go through are definitely tests and ways that we have to kind of experience things in life. And we have to go through things to be able to say that we've made it out of it and to be able to give our testimony, to be able to, you know, share our stories, to be able to give advice, to be able to help other people, whatever it is, we have to go through it. And, you know, I, you know, I don't want to get all religious on you guys, but I think that God handpicks the people that he needs to go through certain storms. He handpicks the people that he needs to go through, you know, have certain breakthroughs. And for what it's worth, you, I believe, are picked to go through the heartbreak that you went through because there's something very important that you need to gain from that there's something very detrimental to your life's journey that you have to be able to pick up and and take out of that process and that experience and keep that with you and then let go of the rest and really let go of it but a piece of that you need to be able to take with you and use it later on when how where and why you're going to use that we don't know that. For me, I believe the experiences that I've gone through, I'm going to have to use those things on my platform. I'm going to have to use those things in the blogs that I write, in the podcasts that I record. In the future when I'm out speaking, because you guys will see me speaking, manifesting over here. <laughs> But those experiences that I've gone through, I've had to pick up things and I'm going to, I'm going to use those. I'm going to use those. They're going to be resources to me at some point in life and as hurtful as they are, as painful as they may be, try to be grateful for the experiences that you go through. And just figure out what you need from it, sis. So, I don't know. I feel like I could continue to talk about this or I can kind of end it here. I feel like I, I dropped a lot. And I hope that someone listening to this is able to really kind of say, yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. And you get something from it and you're going to be okay. We're, we're all going to be okay. Um, you can always turn to Thoughts of a Blog Queen, your sister in spirit. You can always turn here. There's always going to be something that I'm going to share with my sisters that I believe is going to be um, just useful in your journey. I hope at least, you know, I've gotten great feedback. From, from a lot of different women that I, I don't know. Women that I do know, but a lot of women that I don't know, which makes me feel even better to know that people that I don't even know, they have no reason to say that 
this platform did anything for you know they don't have any reason to say that you know but when you get those heartfelt messages and when you get those those nice reviews and when you get those women that hit you up and they're just like yo you spoke to me on a whole nother level on this particular episode and I'm really rocking with you like that makes me feel good and it just makes me want to dig even deeper and so that's why I was like let me get on this mic right now because I need to talk about this heartbreak I need to talk about a heartbreak I, I, I don't know who needs to hear this and I hope that because the person listening to this shares it, someone that they are following or f- follows them or, or someone that they may know, they may get something from it and they, you know, and so forth and so forth. That's why sharing is caring. Share this episode, you guys. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Follow on Spotify. Follow or subscribe, or whatever it is on iHeartRadio, or however it is that you listen to your podcast, just make sure you are connected to me. Episodes drop on Thursday. It used to be every Thursday. It may be every other Thursday. If I am not dropping an episode on Thursday over here, then you guys know you can catch me over on the Pink Tea Chronicles podcast on Sundays. I'm over there. Here or there, you'll hear my voice. I'm everywhere. You pick the spot. So that's all I got for you this time, you guys. And I hope that you um, have an amazing day, night, next day, tomorrow, weekend, whenever it is that you find yourself listening to this, I just hope that you have um, the best of the best. So that's it, you guys. Until next time, you guys, peace and blessings.